I'll go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, right? And I'll go to Toronto tonight like, because I gotta go to the bathroom really bad, right? And all of a sudden, Fred's like, hello. And I'm like, yo. And then I start getting scared. And then I can't go to the bathroom because I'm holding it for like two hours because Fred thought it would be a good idea to just chill out by the light switch. Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bald. Yellow Aki. I'm Hey guys, how's it going? First and foremost, if you are a patron, Brandon, you're falling off my head here, definitely check out one of the latest posts on Patreon. I'm changing up how I'm doing the Patreon shout out. Obviously, you can see things are different in the introduction here, and I would really appreciate your feedback, so definitely check that out. But today, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be talking about spiders in your reptile enclosures. Is this something you should really be removing? I think it is kind of a case-by-case -case basis. This is something I initially kind of cleaned out and made sure not to have. But now I really don't as much and we're gonna kind of talk about it. It's pretty straightforward stuff So let's get into some actual enclosures today and let's talk about this subject Okay, so I think a good enclosure to start this off in first of all hi Max Max has been absolutely crazy lately is Tortellini's enclosure. So let's go into here So I had a little bit of a cricket outbreak in here with crickets that have been escaping my DIY enclosures for my Ackies have been getting a little, I don't know, bent out of shape. They're finally giving in. So crickets, doobie roaches that escape my Ackies grasps, they sometimes get out and they made their way, crickets did, into my Russian tortoise enclosure. So you can see here, there is a cricket in a web. I know it's a little blurry. Oh, come on. All right, there we go. So this is a cricket stuck in a web. It's basically been in there since the beginning of this little outbreak that I finally cleaned up but this is a perfect example of why spiders harmless spiders in your reptile enclosures are a good idea they help with pest control like i said this is very straightforward concept wise but this is you know i think important to talk about i haven't really heard much of this conversation before and now oh god and now it's kind of important to note the terminology i've been using i said in the beginning this is kind of a case-by-case -case basis i have said harmless spiders now case by case i don't recommend you introduce spiders to your enclosures per se it's just kind of if this is something that happens and occurs naturally i live in a rental house that's not really secure so i get a lot of insects coming in and out especially i have a a lot of AC units since there's no central air here. So it's very common for this to happen. So that's the case by case basis I'm kind of talking about. Only do it if this happens by chance and not on purpose. Although, you know, maybe it is beneficial to try this on purpose if you do get a lot of pests in your enclosures. But if you're getting a lot of pests in your enclosures, you're probably getting spiders too. On to harmless. Obviously, you don't want to leave in spiders that could potentially do harm to your reptiles. It's your duty if you're going to allow this to happen to research the spider species that are living in these enclosures. Now, there is always some risk here. I'm obviously no insect expert or spider expert or anything like that, so I can definitely misdiagnose, I guess is a term I can use, the species of spider I'm looking at. But all the ones I have are pretty much house spiders. I mean, you get your daddy long legs, you get your orb weaver, you get just your common house pest control spiders, which is exactly what I want. By the way, guys, if you've watched a few of my videos and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I'd really appreciate it if you do so. Hit the bell as well for latest notifications on the channel. Thanks, guys. I've always thought of my reptile enclosures, at least the bioactive ones, as their own sort of unique ecosystem. Obviously, there are some things missing, like plants, but if you have spiders getting in here, taking care of pests like they would out in nature, and you have isopods doing some cleanup, we just had aces die from my arm, so that was fun. Essentially, it has elements of its own little unique ecosystem, and yes, like I said, there are risks, but I've always kind of enjoyed a little bit of risk in my bioactive setups. I think that's just kind of a part of nature. And while a good point of captivity for a lot of reptile species is to minimize those risks, I think there are benefits of uh, allowing a little bit of risk. I mean, what do you think all those reptiles in Florida living outdoors are dealing with? There's obviously different inverts and different species that interfere with them. And there is a ton of risk there. Yet, you know, they live long, fulfilling lives out there. So I've kind of always enjoyed that element and letting nature play a little bit of its own role. 
even though I love these guys and I enjoy the upsides of it. I really never seen anything negative. Obviously, another example of me giving a little bit of risk is how I go about climbing wood. I don't employ any of those real, I don't know, intense, I guess in my mind, sanitation methods like bleaching and baking. I get my wood from the outdoors from a pretty safe area. And then I just spray it down and let it soak in the sun for several days. Not even. Never had a problem, but I ultimately do this because I want my reptile's immune system to be ready for any foreign bacteria, viruses, and stuff like that. You can super sanitize, but it's very high chance that a foreign bacteria eventually makes its way into your reptile's enclosure at some point in their lives. And if you don't have an immune system in them that's ready to fight, anything foreign then i think they tank pretty easily so i like to include that nature element i find a lot of people tend to ignore the hardiness of reptiles and where they stem from obviously with more generations in captivity being bred some of their biology may change they become more domesticated and they lose that wild aspect potentially but you really need to understand that they have abilities like humans to fight off potential dangerous elements in their habitat they have to that's how they survive and I know there are exceptions. I don't want to downplay that. You know, you might have some snakes or some amphibians, whatever, that may be more receptive to certain bacteria or some morphs are a good example here that the normal coloration, the ones that are out in the wild would fare fine in, but because a particular morph might have some different genes, genetic makeup, they might be more receptive to some particular illness. So I understand this is not for everyone. And like I said in the beginning, it's very case by case, but I do think we should try to harness nature and reduce our workload even. <laughs> Going back to the outdoor wood example that I was just talking about, one of the plus sides to a lot of individuals who employ this method and don't do the super sanitation method is that you sometimes get rewarded with some isopods, some insects that are actually gonna break down waste and do a little bit of a job for you. And that's exactly what I mean by harnessing nature. And that's the whole concept of bioactive, isn't it? Anyway, the real only thing I kind of do with these spider webs is trim them back like you would a plant that's kind of gotten a little out of control. Otherwise, I don't really think they're much of a problem as long as the species is safe and it's not getting out of hand and they're not taking over your enclosure. I think this is a great way to harness nature and allow them to do a little bit of pest control. These guys, just like bees who, you know, a lot of people don't like, including myself, because they sting you and harass you and they traumatize you as a child. <laughs> but these guys are really powerhouses of ecosystems. I mean, they ensure that populations are kept in check of certain pests like gnats and stuff like that. That's your spiders. You have pollination via bees and they always just get a bad rap because a few of them are just a little bit of a nuisance to humans. Like I said, I'm not a fan of wasps but they really do ensure the health of a lot of animals, even insects in the ecosystem they're a part of. So I think it's super important that we leverage these type of insects or do-gooders in our environments. So what do you think about this, guys? I mean, who doesn't, let's just talk in general terms, have a bathroom spider? Why do we keep them around? Because they control the pests in our little dark bathrooms. And they pay rent. They don't, they don't pay right now. There's no way he's living in our house without doing it. Well, you love having spiders around. I absolutely do not. They're all in every one of my enclosures. And do you see any gnats flying around? Any bugs? What do you mean they're all in the enclosures? <laughs> I want you guys in the comments to let me know if you have any pests in your enclosures, whether that be spiders or the occasional fly or gnat making its way into there and how you go about handling that. Do you allow the spiders to stay? Do you clean them out? Let me know and keep it in the wider sense of this conversation. Do you think nature should continue to play its own little role in our bioactive enclosures, I guess? Maybe even non-bioactive, but that's a little bit of a different conversation, I guess. Anyway, guys, that's the video for today. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also, get $5 off your first purchase of Reptilinks by using code ProfessorHerb at checkout. 
Great nutritious diet for hognose snakes, blue tongue skinks, tegus, and more. Use it for frap exclusively, my tegu. And guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you in the next video.